This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and I'm here today with Robert Sweet, former member of Striper. Robert, how you doing, bro? Thanks for, thanks for having me down today, Eric. I'm doing okay. What's been going on in your life? Oh, let's see. I've been staying busy, traveling around a lot. Um, just did a new record, new solo, uh, Love yeah. Trash, and just did a Striper Expo in New York. How did Striper form originally? To give it in a compact answer, in 1983, I took the... Uh, second generation of the three musketeers and threw them in a two-car garage and said we're going to be successful. So that's pretty much how it happened. Uh, well, and Michael Sweet was your brother? Yeah, the singer of the band, uh, Michael Sweet, he is my brother. Uh -huh. And uh, of course there was Timothy Gaines on bass and Oz Fox on guitar, and then there was me. Now how'd you uh, hook up with Oz, first of all? I went to high school with Oz. Mm -hmm. We worked a couple jobs together and actually I've, I've known him since he was probably 10. So you guys got along well, and it, he was like the one for the gig. Yeah, yeah. Besides an occasional fist fight, we got along pretty well. Yeah, well, that's the way it is in any marriage. No, we yeah. we, we get along really well. And then Tim Gaines was in a band called Stormer. Yes, he was. He was doing the Hollywood thing around the same time that uh, my previous band, Rock Regime, was playing. Uh -huh. And I thought he had cool hair, so I and thought a good I got. Yeah, he had a great look, so I thought we got to got to recruit him, and we did. And, and I there's, did. There's a story that CeCe DeVille, and actually I talked to CeCe you did. last year, yeah, and he says he loves you guys, he, he, he'd love to see you anytime, give him a call, but uh, tell me the story about CeCe DeVille being in Striper for maybe a week, was yeah. it? I, I love him too, he's, he's a wonderful guy, he said he wanted to play guitar for us, and we had met a few years prior in Hollywood, and he had just come out from New York and he was looking for a band, and uh, we got together and he just, uh, he was looking for something a little more glam, and that's when he hooked up with Poison, but he's a great guitar player, he's a great songwriter, and fun guy. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. He's really hip on what's going on in music, too. Yes, he is. Who are some of your influences like on drumming? Because I know there's a lot of fans of you know, your drum style out there, so you know, give them a little insight to who kind of got you started. I don't really have that many influences. Well, I, I like John Bonham from Led Zeppelin John Bonham, a lot. And I, I, I've actually been through your record collection before. But you no, have. A number of times. So I know that I've seen a lot of Emerson, Lake and Palmer records. Well, and Queen. Yeah, th they really weren't influences, though. I think I just looked at drums differently than the the everyday drummer. You know, a lot of guys play drums and they, they, they listen to a record and try to copy the licks and all. I didn't do that. I just, I looked at lead singers. I looked at guitar players. I wanted to be a little more flashy. I always thought drummers were had a tendency to be boring hidden behind their drum sets. So when Striper started, I spun it to the side and I tried to do my form of ragdoll drumming, that's what I call it, you know, throw yourself around and hope you don't get hurt, but as long as it looks good and sounds good, more power to you. So, I just, I thought drumming needed a shot in the arm as far as the entertainment. You uh, were the one of the first drummers to actually put your drum set on uh, facing the side so people could actually see the drummer for a change. Yeah. How did you get the idea for that? I don't know, I just thought it was a kind of a cool idea because I wanted people to see what I was doing with my feet as, as well as my hands and you know I've been doing that stuff for 20 years now throwing the sticks up in the air and catching them and picking the cymbals up and hitting another cymbal with it and kicking the drums over and laying on top of it and all that and it's I think drumming needs that I think th there was a while when it, being a drummer was being was looked at as kind of an uninteresting thing. Yeah. And I wanted to spice it up and make it come alive. You had a very successful run with Striper. What are some of the highlights of that that stand out to you moments where you said, wow? Uh, I would have to say it'd probably be playing in the sold out uh, Olympic Stadium in Seoul, Korea. What year was that? This was 1989 and it looked like Pink Floyd the Wall. We got there and they had this giant wall up that was probably 50 feet high made out of scaffolding with lights and uh, I remember playing the first song and halfway through the song having to stop. Uh, the uh, security guards were firing rubber bullets at the crowd because they had rushed forward wow. and knocked over the television cameras. It was being filmed live for 40 million people. And uh, the cameras got broken, the soundboard got knocked over and it was an hour until we were able to go into the second song. Uh, for a minute power. I thought this is something like what Beatlemania must have felt yeah, like. Yeah, I know. It must be amazing to feel that power when you hit the stage of the, just all those people into what you're doing all at one time. I didn't know it was going to happen, but you know, as long as nobody got hurt, I think it was pretty cool. Why did Striper break up? Uh, I think it was primarily because my brother, the singer, um, he wanted to launch out and, and do a different style of music. He wanted a solo career. So in 1992, he kind of 
headed off to, uh, to do his thing. And uh, Tim and Oz and I stayed together for a year after my brother had left to do some, uh, some pretty big festivals in Europe that were booked because we didn't want to let a bunch of people down who had already bought their ticket. Yeah. But uh, I just think my brother was looking for you know, to express himself musically differently. Is there a Striper website? Yes, there is. There's striper.com, and uh, I've got my website, robertsweet.com. You cool. can find a lot of Striper stuff on there, and uh, the other guys in Striper have their, their sites also. Striper just uh, reunited for a, a special Striper convention. Can you he, like tell me a little bit about this? Yeah. You know, you've heard of like the KISS conventions yeah. before. That's kind of what it was like. It, it was a trip. I've, I've never done anything like that before, and... Uh, uh, we played there. We got up together. We hadn't played together in eight years, and it, it was great. Uh, people had flown in from all around the world, as far as Venezuela, or Mexico City. Uh, uh, there's a couple people from Korea, from New Zealand, Canada. It was wonderful just to look out and see this huge line of people mm -hmm. there to swap striper merchandise or buy things wow. they never had a chance to buy Boy, i can make a mint there you probably <laughs> could well you're going to come to the next one then aren't yeah, you yeah i will definitely right. well that was free by striper and i believe that's off the to hell with the devil record am i correct bob you are correct 1986 19 86. Yeah, and like I was just telling you uh, during the video that I actually picked out a couple clips for that video, believe it or not. Yes, you did. You were quite involved with us back then. What did you do after your time with Striper when the band, when you finally decided to move on? Well, let's see. I, I'd say the first year I just took a year off. Um, then I started uh, uh, recording a lot with other people. Um, you did, uh, Yeah, you did some session work. Yeah, I probably played on about 25 to 30 different records since then. I did a couple of tours, and then uh, the last year I decided to move to Vegas, and that's when I uh, hooked up with a, a World Gone Mad. The record, your record label? Yes, cool. and uh, started work on my record. You know, I really like this, uh, this cover that we have here. It's called Love Trash. And tell me about this artwork. What inspired this? The girls tearing up pictures of Robert Sweet and it looks like pictures from your striper days. It actually comes from, it's, it's a true story in 1990 when we came out with our Against the Law record. Oh, I remember that well. There were a few striper fans that didn't quite know how to, you know, to take that situation. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was just a big misunderstanding and a girl called me on the phone crying and as she was crying she was tearing up a picture of me. So, uh, I thought I'd put that on the cover. On the Aww. back, you see a picture of me that's been taped back together and stuck up on the wall. So uh -huh. I'm just kind of saying, look, I've been shredded, okay? But now I'm back together, I'm up on the wall. And if you open the, the CD, there you'll see the same picture of me mm -hmm. uh, on the pullout, and there's no more tears. The scars are gone. It's right here. That's the same picture that's on the back. Oh, okay. All the, you know, I'm back up on the board. The scars are gone. It's cool. a new start. It's a new day. Yeah, I like. Record. I also like this picture of you with all the guitars. Oh, thanks. That's hot. Now, do you own those guitars? Uh, some of them. Some of them. Yeah. Is this? How about this blue uh, Gibson? Uh, no, that was the uh, the guy I had singing on the oh, record. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, tell that me. His. That's something else I want to ask you about. This. I noticed that you played all the guitars. Yes. All the bass. Yes. And drums. Yes. And all you had is this other guy who can't come in and sing now. How, how, he, is he going to go on tour with you? or? Well, maybe. I've uh, kind of put out on the internet right now, I think I'm going to start auditioning musicians. Oh, you want another vocalist? Uh, maybe. I'm, oh. uh, I'm kind of thinking about which direction I, I'm, I'm going to put it together in. But what I did is I've always kind of wanted to be a guitar player. Yeah. Well, when I was a little kid, before I started playing drums, you know, I used to pick up the guitar and kind of strum my way on it. And, you know, when it comes to guitar, I don't know what I'm doing, so I just went ahead and did it anyways. And um, I remember when you used to jam. Yeah. You're good, man. Well, thank you. You used to play Ain't Talking About Love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know that I play, and I'm pretty well known for being a drummer, but I want to let people know I play guitar, too. Cool. Yeah, you, I think you've always been a great musician, because we used to sit down and jam out some of my songs and stuff back in the day. Remember, you'd be all doo-doo playing bass. and Yeah, you had some great songs. Yeah. Well, those were the days. Those days are over now. So how did you find your singer, Larry? Uh, I've known him for quite a while also. Uh -huh. um, and he's from another band, correct? Yeah, he was from a group called Fear Not, mm -hmm. and I, I simply gave him a call. He didn't know any of the songs. He, uh, I told him to come down and spend a week with me, 
and he basically showed up, walked in the studio, stood in front of the mic. I had a mic in front of the mixing board. We had the wall separating us. I'd sing one line, then he'd sing it. I'd sing another line, and he'd sing it. So it was kind of cool. I mean, he didn't really know what was coming. You know, some of it I kind of ad lib to get a certain vibe. I didn't want everything pinpointed down. Yeah. You know. Well, he definitely sounds good on the record. Thank you. Good, strong vocalist. Yeah, he's good. So how long did it take to record this album? Well, I, I tracked all of the instruments in a week. Mm -hmm. And we did all of the vocals in five days. It makes it real easy, or a lot easier actually, to just have to worry about yourself. Hey, is yeah. the bass player going to be here? You're sweating, the studio time's running up, and right. you, you're just like, hey, I'm doing it all myself. I don't have to worry about it. You know, I do have to say, since you brought that up, that, that was another reason that I, I did it. Not only did I want to play the guitar and I enjoy playing guitar, I, you know, after the breakup of Striper, I worked with so many different musicians who just would never show up, Ugh. or it just kind of became a, a trouble know. thing. So I said, I don't want to deal with that. And it was really nice. I, I didn't have to worry about anybody else. I just right on. did it how I wanted and came out came out pretty good. How does working on your own project differ from being a part of Striper? Oh boy, they, they both have their, their really good points. For me, this is my first solo record. I've always been used to walking in and working with three other guys and kind of working within the, uh, you know, the set format that we have with Striper, and that's not a bad thing, that's just what Striper is. With this, there was, there was more freedom. I was able to do what I felt should be there. A lot of the, the early Striper records we had producers saying, no, Robert, I don't want you to do that. I want you to play a simple 2-4 beat or, you know, something real simple. I listen back to it and it's like, that wrecked it. I remember when you were working with um, the, uh, Tom Worman. I was in the studio when you were working on it. Was it Against the Law? Yes, that was Striper's first. That's what I call the first real rock and roll album. Well, I remember you came in the room uh, and told me one time you were all, man, Tom Worman wants me to totally play all my stuff backwards. You were like, and I have to relearn all my songs now. Well, I, I did have to do that, but you know, he, he was also the kind of producer where if you did something and he liked it, he would encourage you to ad lib. And some of the earlier producers we had on Striper, they were just too rigid. They didn't want you to, they didn't want to let you be free to find that spur of the moment thing that makes records what they are. Yeah, free to do what you want to, right? Right. Yeah. Choose your own destiny. Yeah. So how has your songwriting, your approach to songwriting changed from well, your, your time with Striper? Because you did co-write To Hell With The Devil and a lot yes. of the other songs. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much the same. It's just, um, in Striper, I would kind of leave most of the music to, to my brother Michael, and I would usually come up with the title. Well, I came up with the title on all the records, and then I would write the lyrics to all of the title songs. But I was so busy with the press and designing what Striper was visually uh, that I just left the music to Mike. But this time, how it's different is I'm just I'm able to put the entire everything I hear in my head that I see, everything I see before what it is, I'm able to put it there. In Striper, it was just drums and lyrics. Now, besides, um, you know, Striper, would you, and if that ever happens again, would you like to maybe ever put together like a super group, or do you think that's just a waste of time? No, I don't think it's a waste of time at all. I'd love to. Um, you know, I'm, I've got plans for that. What you're here to talk about today is Robert Sweet's Love Trash, correct? Yep, that's it. So tell me, where, did this, where does this name Love Trash come from? Well, you remember the... Uh the big hit show, Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire? Uh huh. They got all, they got married and we're all in love, and like one week later, they're, it's like they're not together any longer. That's just garbage. That show's garbage. That's what the song's about. There's oh. a lot of people out there who say they love one another, but give it a little time, they just throw each other away. Yeah, I know. They move up the ladder. That happens a lot in the entertainment business. I know. That's, it's kind of a sad thing. What's the F word about? Yes, another. That's a play on words. Oh, of course. It's about forgiveness. Okay. Uh, you know, I love titling things that are going to catch people's attention. At least I try to. I don't like just titles that don't say anything in it. I like it to reach out and grab you. I'm sure a lot of these titles are going to reach out and, and grab you too, like Sweet Betrayal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, that's a good one. Okay, so will you t uh, tour to support this CD? Yes. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to be, I want to get back to Vegas. I'm going to put the word out that I'm going to be looking for. Uh, new musicians to, uh, you know, to, to put something together with. I'll probably use uh, Larry Worley on vocals. 
So he will tour with you then? I think so. I just have to find out, you know, what he's got going on. I think he's got another project he's supposed to do. So, it's, you know, if he does go, I'd have to match up with his time. Okay, and I've also heard that you have some major distributors interested in your uh, CD right now. Yeah, we're, uh, we're in the early uh, stages of working out the business, but it is, you know, you can get it at robertsweet.com. Okay, and Bob, you are now, now married. You've been yes, married I for am. how many years now? Since it's five years. Wow, time flies, doesn't it? And you have a child? Yes, yes, I have a three-year-old boy. He was three on May 20th. And is he musically inclined? I think so. He's a lefty, and I've snuck in the room. I've seen him uh, swinging the sticks and playing a small guitar. May 20th, him. is that when he was born? Yes. Oh, so on my birthday. Yeah, on Isn't your that birthday. irony? And you know, Guido, his wife just happens to be born on my, my birthday, too. Really? It's a special day. How do you like that? So, what's next for Robert Sweet, and will there be a Striper reunion ever? Well, I think so. Um, this The Striper Expo was a good start. I hope it does happen. Um, but I'm right now, I'm, I'm working on new songs for the next record. I'm uh, you know, working to put the Love Trash tour together. And hopefully, soon, we'll st see some big Striper shows happen. Well, cool, Bob. I wish you much success. Thank you for being on the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Thank show you. today, dude. It's my you, pleasure. You rock. You're a cool guy. Yeah. Okay, this is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. And we're out of here. The Blaring Out show.